Okay, so for the previous two videos, we went ahead and used the um, input and message box. We then went and updated the message box to have a few more outputs in it and looked at how to use the locals window. A few problems still exist. So let's say we run this simulation and now we have a couple of codes. So I'm going to go ahead and run that second one that we created. If we, what, what's going to happen here if I'm rebellious and I don't put a number less than five? So let's say I put a number eight in here. So I'm not putting in a number that's less than five. So here we go. Okay. It says, ah, runtime error five, invalid procedure call or argument. So I can hit the debug button and we see, yay, I can't, I can't make this calculation. And at this point, I can go ahead and stop and reset my code, hit escape, get out of there. And I know I've got problems if the user does not put in the information correctly. So how can I think ahead and change this code around so that no matter what the user puts in, it's going to be able to calculate something? So I'm going to go ahead and control C and update. Let's go ahead and insert a new module, control V, and I'm going to call this number three. So we're, this is our modification number three that we're going to do. And for this modification, let's walk through some if statements. So let me pull up this real quick and an if statement here. Okay, so here's an if statement. So we're going to have if some condition, x is larger than 5, x is less than 5, x equals 0, then we're going to do this calculation. Else, if x is less than 3, maybe we have a whole bunch of different conditions, then we'll do this. Else, if this. And the very last one, instead of else, if, we'll have else, the final thing that we'll do, and this is where we will end that if loop. So if statements, if you make a flow chart, an algorithm for how your program runs, so kind of a yes, no, are we going to go this way or that way? If statements are, are really great than that, and it, they consist of starting with if, condition, then do your calculation, and then here's the next scenario, then the next scenario, and all other considerations are going to be dumped into this last bucket, end if. So let's go ahead and, and try that out in this code. So where do we want to stop things? So x, enter a number less than 5, and our user enters something that's larger than 5. So this is where we're going to need to start entering an if statement. So let's go ahead and say if, capital I, little f, x space less space than 5, then we're good, right? Then we can go through our regular calculations and all as well. Else... Okay, so this is for all other things. If x is going to be larger than 5, then we're going to have to do some different calculations. I guess x could equal, it could equal, it could equal 5 too. So otherwise, before we do those calculations, I'm going to have to redefine x. So let's just call it x equals... I don't know. This is just a random thing. So we'll change it around. That'll ensure that the new value of x will actually work in here. So it'll probably be like 5 minus 8, negative 3. So 5 minus negative 3. We'll get a positive number in here one way or the other. And so then we should probably say you entered and in valid number. And then we'll keep going. The square root of 5 minus the new x is y. Okay, so, so we've told them 
that x is reassigned, x has and reassigned. The square root of 5 and x is y. Okay, so now we have two conditions. So here's the good condition, else we're going to be doing something different. And at the very end of it, of course, we have to end that little if statement in the loop. And then we have the subroutine ended. One thing that's kind of nice to do for if statements is to indent it. So here's underneath that first if statement, else. So it just helps to, to chunk things together to, to play around with the spacing on this. OK, let's try it out. So we'll go ahead and play this. So let's go ahead and enter number 8. OK, you entered an invalid number. x has been reassigned. The square root of 5 minus negative 3 is this. OK, so it calculated something. It reassigned it. Now let's try it if we put in a good number. So let's put in 2. So now we say, oh, the square root of 5 minus 2. So now we're OK. What happens if we put in 5? The square root of 5 minus 5 is 0. OK, so it works It works all around there. So, so anyways, that's a, that's a good example of, of an if statement there.